so i have made these notes from uh, to darrow and smith chapter 2 have a look at them um write these notes properly pause the video in between and read book also and add on points so let's take a discussion further about the long run causes of the comparative development we have talked about i think uh, seven or six uh, arrows so we have, i think seven arrows let's start with the eighth arrow how physical geography is also affecting the evolution and the timing of european development see geography has influenced economic history in europe so those countries they developed fast whose geography was favorable even in europe right and uh, it helped europe to develop faster than the other parts of the world and because europe developed faster than the other parts of the world it has a sort of advantage over the others so it's like a first mover advantage they were able to become more powerful before others even became powerful and they started dominating the other parts of the world right then the arrow 9 is there arrow 9 is how evolution and timing of european development is affecting the type of colonial regime well you have to understand one thing that when europe started colonizing the other parts of the world initially it had the view it is just going to plunder the wealth and move out and later on they stayed in colonies for large part of time so those areas which were colonized for only short period of time they were not developed that that much but those areas where europeans lived for huge part of time because they had to live for a large part they developed institutions right and uh, they developed those areas they developed faster because um, where they where they live for the large part of the time they focus on the production of goods and services although whether it was the it was uh, the colonization where europeans were living only for short period vis-a-vis -vis the colonies where europeans lived for large period of time both type of colonization harmed indigenous population there is no doubt about it although it had some benefit beneficial effects also we'll see it and then came the 10th hero 10th hero is that how this type of colonial regime affected the post colonial institutional quality so your text gives an example it says this that belgium it colonized congo and it colonized congo with a very tight fist even after independence the type of the governments which came in congo they were also very tight fisted they were also very ruthless so the type of the colonial regime also affected the post colonial institutions one second thing is that undoubtedly this is also true that with colonization there were few beneficial effects also came europeans they they uh, brought with themselves better farming techniques they also brought with themselves modern medicine right then this point where uh, where uh, europeans lived in those colonies where europeans lived for only small period of time those areas were not developed much but where europeans lived for large period of time those areas developed better right because they were focusing on the production they were staying there for a long time they need certain kind of development <clears throat> then how the colonial regime affected inequality you can see this type of colonial regime affected inequality this is arrow 11 uh, you look at the cases of latin america and caribbean i have given you example earlier also where spanish colonizers they became very rich and the indigenous population was very poor discrimination was based on ethnicity 
there was huge inequality between Spanish colonizers and indigenous population. Why? Because uh, 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 colonizers, they can use indigenous population as slaves. Uh, and what bargaining power slaves would have? They had to do what their masters would say. There was hardly any growth, hardly any human development. And this happened particularly in Latin America and Caribbean. Then the 12th arrow, how inequality led to the post-colonial institutions in quality and how post-colonial institution quality also affected inequality. So there is a relationship. Generally, what is seen is that in those areas where inequality is very high, there will be less, less investment in education, less investment in public goods. There will be less democratic institutions. Then only you can have huge inequality. So these institutions, uh, which were less democratic, they also reinforced inequality. So inequality reinforced that there will be more undemocratic institutions in the country. And these post-colonial institutions also reinforce inequality. This is generally true. In areas where there is huge inequality, there is less investment in education. There is less investment in public goods. There is less investment in human development. Because think now, in case of the people get educated, they will start questioning. Right? They will start questioning. And they, these institutions do not want people to question. So what is the way out? Keep inequality very high. They would be always in... Uh, the fight for survival, they will have no education, they can't ask any questions. Right? Then, 13th arrow is between inequality and human capital. How inequality affects human capital? You look at uh, situations in Latin America where there was extreme inequality. I've told you, in areas where there is more inequality, there is less investment in education. There is less investment in human development, in which, which hinders development. Right. Then, how human capital, this 14th arrow, how human capital affects income and human development? Human capital, you understand, now. Health, investment in health, investment in education. Right. If populations, they are, they are educated, those populations will have higher income. They will have higher human development, right? Uh, the educated uh, population tend to have better governments also. Because government will also be formed from the educated class and they will take better decisions. So human capital also affect income. How? Because educated people can have more income. Human capital can also affect human development. Why? Because in case if there is educated class of people, they will elect educated government and educated government will take better decisions. Then human capital can affect public goods quality and public goods quality can affect human capital. This is arrow 15. Relationship between human capital and public goods quality. Guys, you have to understand this. If there is a well-educated population, uh, it will create well-educated citizens. These well-educated citizens can find out where the government is going wrong. It can always ask questions from the government. You are doing this thing wrong. They can protest. They can ask questions. Uh, so it will affect the public goods quality. What are public goods quality? Education, health. So the government is not investing in them. People can ask government to do that. Then how inequality can also lead to public goods quality. That is 16th arrow. In case if a country has more inequality, what is generally seen is that there is less investment in education. There is less investment in healthcare, which is going to further harm the development. 
So inequality is also going to lead to uh, human, uh, this is going to harm human development. This is going to harm income development, right? So this is what I want to do in this class. Thank you, Vita.